Um, we have a, we're going to dive into some questions first. Um, oh, hello, Kathy. So and, and um, we've got lots to cover and it's February. And since we have an extra day this February, I think we have to cover a little extra. Something. Okay. <laughs> All right. So do you want to start um, talking that one of the first questions that somebody asked us that will be covered for those of you who are participating in the Secret Agent Quilt Along, um, we're covering this in depth in the mission video tomorrow. tomorrow. But um, do you want to explain how we pin? Yeah. Because some people who are using um, open seams for the first time are wondering, they're, they're mm -hmm. concerned if they put the pin through an open seam that it's just going to fall apart. Right. So this is a general discussion. We have this often and whether or not you're participating in the quilt along, that's fine. But one of the, there, there are a couple keys to accuracy and, and stress-free quilting, I think. And Weeks often talks about the fact that you don't want to compound problems. So we always want to start out with good, clean cutting. And pinning is actually as important to us as is sewing in many cases. And I wanted to use an example where we have two traditional blocks here. And let's say we wanted to pin these together, sorry, in such a way that we got the points to match. And you'll often hear people talking and quilting about matching points. And, and we're, we don't want to match points because we're the quilt police, because we believe in everything being perfect. But it's more that if part of the design is for things to align, you want to have success in trying to align them. And we also, we, we press all of our seams open. <laughs> you don't need to. Please hear yes. that. You do what works for you, but we can certainly talk about this. Like for us, that works. And so. And why, why we find it easier to, um, to press, why it's easier when you're aligning seams to have open seams, but. Yeah. So yeah, we press way. seams open for two reasons. We find it makes the pinning easier and we like how it distributes bulk. But the key to alignment and pinning, especially if you have triangles, is you want your points to match really, really nicely. And one of the advantages of pressing open is you can place your pin. Yeah, I, I just have to place okay. and then you can place your pin very precisely right where the points come together. And if you slide that through from the back, and of course I have a slightly bent pin, but if it goes through from the back, when you look to the right side, that pin comes exactly at the point. And what I want to point, point out is that this pin happens to be exactly one quarter of an inch from this seam. The raw edge of the from, seam. Oh, yeah. the, see, the raw edge, sorry. Yeah. Now, if I want to join it to this one, I'm going to take my pin and go exactly through that same point, the corresponding point on the other block. And on the back, it will come out really, really nicely there. And what's important now is that when we pin, we kind of anchor the pin and a lot of people who are new to quilting may start pinning from the edge of the block. We are always trying to focus on pinning where you will see the greatest dif dis yeah. difference. And I'm looking, do I have one more pin? Sorry, I have to ah, duck and then bump the monitor there. Um, if I have one I'm more pin, one. I've got one okay. here. And the key here, if I have two main points in this star block, once I pin those, that's going to tell me exactly where my seam, my stitch line is going to go exactly where I've pinned. And at the end of the block, although I'll try to align them, they may not be precise there. That's less important because that little 16th of an inch of difference is going to get hidden in a seam later on, whereas these points are the critical ones. So here's, so, here's yeah. what I would not do. 
So, um, yeah, this is I knowing this, what not to do is so yeah, important. I see this all the time, which is where somebody will post, you know, pin like that and then think that you're going to have alignment here. It's not going to happen. The pin has to go exactly where you want the alignment to happen. Yeah. And you're going to sew slowly up into the up to the pin and remove the pin before you break the needle. You don't want to hit it. But and it's faster than you think once you get the hang of it. And so I put it right back in there. So having your right seams pressed brush. open, you can really clearly see whether or not you've pinned accurately. And there are people who are concerned, like if if the seams are open, aren't they going to be weak? And the reality is no. I mean, with modern well, well, sewing machines, yeah. the stitching is so strong. Well, the thing is, if if you're worried about that, you can shorten your stitch length. But yeah. but again, if you don't want to do, you know, we, we've we're, never we're not about we're it. not um, we're not proselytizing over. So I just want to kind of point pointing out that little bit about uh, pinning for for a couple people who had that question. So I'm um, gl I'm glad May said that uh, this has helped her and um, prevent her from ripping out seams. Yeah, I, it really does work because you're the piece, the parts that you care about are They're those anchored. intersections. Yeah. And if you, you know, I actually sew. Uh, I do needle down um, with our uh, sewing machine on the pedal has a um, a heel um, option to put the needle down. And I put it down right before the pin. And then take the pin and out. And then take the pin out and then continue sewing. And then right before the next pin. Needle down. Right. Because the then pin. it can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the whole thing. And so okay. I hope that's helpful for some of you as it has been for me. Yes. And I'm going to quickly jump up to Penny's question about, have we gotten more starter packs in? We are still waiting there. We, you, you've talked to them. Yeah, so the um, for those of you who have not been paying attention to world events, uh, there has been there have been terrorist uh, uh, attacks on shipping vessels in the Red Sea, where most of the vessels carrying fabric from um, the subcontinent. Yes, well, through Asia, um, they typically used to go up the Red Sea to get to North America. And now they have to go all the way down the um, the bottom of uh, Africa, which adds on a lot of days, and that has delayed the um, that violence. And a lot of the shipping, the freight companies are saying we're not even going to try to go through that area because they've been attacked too many times. So they're going down, and that adds time. It adds like eleven days onto it. So um, we didn't get the um, the starter bundles when we expected, and unfortunately, it looks like we probably won't get them until the 10th or the 12th of February. However, we do have 10 by 10 um, packs in that a lot of people are using who just need um, it, uh, a few pieces of fabric so you don't have to buy the whole bundle. Yeah. Um, but they're they're coming. They're, they're they, coming. they are coming. And they're actually the good news is I think are they're I think the 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 fabric is arriving this week. It's tomorrow. not it's not like in the middle of no it's, it's uh, arriving the Atlantic warehouse. Ocean. It tomorrow, is arriving tomorrow. It's arriving tomorrow. Take them so time. It's it's encouraging. <laughs> it's kind of like it's almost like having tracking. It's good to know that it's close. Yeah, but the thing is that then once it arrives in the warehouse, they need to put it in the bundles and to uh, get it to us. Get and it then to get us, it to you. and you know, so um, we're trying to m be realistic and make sure that you are aware that as a result of world events, it's delayed. Yeah, world events really affect quilting. They really do. Um, so, but we do have the ten by ten uh, packs, and many of you. We uh, sold out of them earlier this week, so we got another order in today. Oh, I didn't even know they came yes, today. They okay, came that's today. good. <laughs> so, um, so uh, we will ha we'll start shipping them tomorrow. Great. Um, airship it. I don't uh, know what you're referring to. Um, air shipping the fabric is extremely expensive. If, so I'm not yeah. sure whether you're asking <laughs> us to airship it or um, it's not. 
uh, if you think the price of fabric is expensive now, <laughs> if you tried to airship... Unless you um, have a private plane, you're yes, volunteering. Yes, thousands and thousands of, um, of yeah. yards. That would not be an option. So, um, so I'm, I'm scrolling back up and seeing, Susan, uh, your, your comment with the pinning that it helps to have fine pins as it doesn't distort the fabric as much. Totally agree. There is... There's this really interesting balancing act with pins. Some of them are so fine that they're incredibly accurate, but they bend too easily. Some are too thick and distort the fabric. Everyone has their favorites. I love the clover flower head pins. To me, it's kind of a really nice balance, but some people swear by the glass head pins, which are very, very thin. Whatever works for you, please use that. Okay, I do want to get back to okay. just. <laughs> well, I'm just, just trying to keep an order here. I know I'm, I'm. I'm trying to keep it based on topic. Okay. So um, the question about is there more yardage coming? There is more yardage coming, so um, we expect um, we may get the yardage before the bundles. Okay. I would hope so. And we have that black um, specifically that you're asking about. Yes. We want it too. <laughs> yes, we do. We're out as well. Um, and then there was a question about, um, can you explain why with the cutting diagrams for Secret Agent, some of them um, uh, spread down as opposed to across the fat quarter in the diagram? And is this because people will need, need larger pieces later? Or can you just talk about the cutting diagrams and why you organize them the way you have. So in general, and I, I don't want to say too much here, but in general, the cutting diagrams, there is a logic to them that you have to kind of trust us on. A lot will, you will see a lot come mission five, which will be released tomorrow. And in general, it's mostly about efficiency. Sometimes it's thinking about what's the easiest thing for you to cut. There's no more big stress over making things fit perfectly, as you'll, you'll see tomorrow. And I think, honestly, every time we do a quilt, those cutting diagrams are like a little bonus. I, I think they sometimes they cause a little anxiety because people want to make sure they get it right but as we said in the introductory video they're kind of a they're a smart suggestion based on what we already know right. so again maybe i can talk more about it when it's over yes. but uh in general we're either leaving room for certain size pieces or we're leaving room so that what's left over at the end is the most useful for you to have in your stash so um, there's a question of where and when and where should I order the pack that I need? If you are looking for a 10 by 10 um, pack, let me see if I can grab one. We do have um, those. You can order that right now on our website. Yeah, those are available right now. The starter packs, the transparency fat quarter packs will be available again, certainly um, by mid-February as soon as we get them in. Here are the and 10 by 10 packs, and it's 42 pieces, 10 by 10, um, of all of the fabrics, but because there's 24 in the line and there's 42 pieces. It's so one I'm, or two it's pieces. It's one or two, yes. Oh, thank you, Debbie, for providing a link. And, and I, I, I do want to add one other thing about the question about the cutting diagrams. I know there are going to be times that some people will think, why did you go down rather than across? That's what she was just right, asking. Right, but, but there, one of the other reasons I didn't talk about is that some of you pre-wash your fabrics, some of you don't. Some of you trim, some, you, you have different ways of working. So there are times when it would have worked to lay things out across, but we didn't want it to be stressful if you happen to pre-wash and, and shrink way more than usual. So it's, it's all about balancing. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, there were also other questions about the uh, transparency bundle 
and what other quilts people can make yeah. with the bundle. And part of the challenge, um, because the line sold out so quickly, is we had other projects we were planning on showing. Right away. Um, as part of the launch, but then when the fabric sold out very quickly, um, it didn't seem like, uh, it, it, it would seemed, be frustrating. It would be frustrating to show you a bunch of things. So do you want to talk about the other projects and when people can so find them? Later in February, when we have more fabric, we'll also be showing you two additional projects. Uh, we'll have a new version of our jewel box quilt, which we've had for years, but this is using the transparency fabrics. It looks beautiful with it. And we have another quilt called Plaid Party, which is a hue-based transparency that is um, really great with the line. But they can't use the... So the challenge, the challenge is, I think the, the question is, we need to refine the question yes. more, which is, are you asking about patterns that are transparency quilts that work with the bundle, or are you just asking about quilts that work with the or bundle? Or quilts that work with the line. Right. So in, in terms of which transparency quilts work with the bundle, we have designed so many transparency quilts over the mm -hmm. years that maybe that's something we need to do is just make a list of which ones might work with it. But I think for those of you doing the secret agent quilt along, when you see the reveal in a, in a little bit, it will really help you imagine possibilities. Jackie is reminding you because it was a year ago and yeah, you forgot. Yeah, the yeah. plaid party was in the, the uh, January calendar. So, um, yeah. Just yeah. believe her. Okay. Okay, Jackie, I'm confused, <laughs> but. Yeah. So, um, but. Oh, oh, that was plaid happy, not plaid party. Plaid, oh, yeah, plaid, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I was going to say, no, no, you haven't seen Plaid Party yet. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah. why I was confused for a moment. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe those names are a little close. Well, so Plaid Happy, yeah. which I loved, that is a very seen. different quilt. That was, yeah. that was not a transparency quilt. That was one using our warp and weft wovens. Right. Um, so, but the challenge for fat quarters because I'm sure you can understand that. It's like, imagine if you're making a meal and somebody asks you, okay, I have um, two cups of flour and a tablespoon of butter and um, three heads of cabbage and-, and five you know, eggs. Five eggs and, uh, you know, what do I make with that? Uh, it's, you know, we're a little bit different in that um, we're, we want to make sure you have the exact amount of fabric you need. And most of the quilts, um, you know, that we've made with transparency don't use all of the bundle. Or equal amounts. Right. And so, for example, with Plaid Party, that has a, um, it has a lot of white. So we'll make kits with that that have the white that you would need also. And jewel box. But if you've already got the bundle, yeah, like jewel, you could make it. Jewel box, you could use the bundle plus extra background fabric. Oh, she was thinking of Madras. Oh, Madras. Oh, yeah. okay, Jack. Oh, I love Madras too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. that. And actually, for those of you who have seen the Madras quilt, that is, you know, it's a very classic transparency quilt right. of ours. And you could absolutely do variations on that idea with these transparency fabrics. The, the, the thing is, I don't think you'd have Quantities. the quantity because that's like a three or yeah. four, maybe five uh, fabric quilt. Maybe the baby, the, the yeah. lap quilt version might work. I, I right. can't remember. Right. We had different sizes in the transparency book. So um, it's, it's, it's a challenging thing because often when we're doing these fabric lines, people might be asking um, for like a number of quilts that they can make with that exact bundle. And we don't work that, I mean, we have fat, our Fat Quarter Love series of Fat Quarter Love and Fat Quarter Love 2 and 3 that use Fat Quarter bundles. But not usually for transparency. Yeah, quotes. because it's just a little bit pickier. Yeah. And um, so, but there's... But you'll, you'll get more inspiration. When we right. get the line in, 
we'll be showing more that should help you see. But we had to kind of change a bit of our marketing plans when the, the fabric, sold fabric sold out so yeah. quickly. Yeah. So, um, but there will be more, um, more uh, options. However, we did design Secret Agent specifically for the bundle. Yeah. So that, so that was is, a little different. Yeah, that is uh, the best project for the most efficient use of it. But there yeah. are there are others that uh, will use the line. Yes. That Not are, necessarily the entire bundle. But, right. But right. that are that are coming. Um, so then there were questions about people wanting to know um, how uh, how we design these patterns and what is the process that we use to design these patterns for both the... And, and I think I, I was really a little bit unclear as to whether they were talking about quilt along patterns or whether they were talking about regular patterns. But I guess we could start with regular patterns. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I think the, it's kind of like saying, how do you write a novel? You know, it's, it's, it, it's, there are many different starting points. However, the one book that if you're Quick interested, <laughs> if you're interested in, um, for, at least for me, I don't know, you'll have to speak for yourself, the most kind of accurate uh, description of at least my creative process is um, very similar to Twyla Tharp's in The Creative Habit. Um, when I read this book, I thought, this is exactly She's in my mind. the way I think and the way I operate. And for those of you who don't know Twyla she's Tharp, fantastic. she's really kind of one of the great modern dance choreographers. And one of the th there are a couple of things that set her apart. Not only is she a phenomenal choreographer, but she's very articulate about her process. And I think there there are different kinds of creative people. Some people are work very, very intuitively, create beautiful work, but aren't necessarily good at explaining their process or teaching their process. I think Weeks is definitely in the category of someone who's very creative and also very analytical and articulate and able, I think this is my guess why this resonates, is you both have kind of a foot in both worlds as being able uh, you, you've got the creativity and the ability to articulate that. No, no actually, no? Okay. <laughs> actually, the reason this resonated so much um, for me is that what I love and what, what just made me so happy with this book was her description of the creative process being a combination of creativity and discipline. Yeah. And that she describes her method of uh, she has a taxi that arrives at her apartment every morning at 530 a.m. period. And she goes at 530 a.m. and she starts she refers to it as chicken scratching. So in the same way that chickens scratch the soil to find seed, she believes, and I feel the same way, that it's not a matter, you know, when you see it in movies sometimes, people are expecting that there's gonna be this aha moment, you know, or that you need to take some vacation to Italy and you see a, <laughs> a tile floor that's you, have, you eat the perfect thing and suddenly you realize yeah. the meaning of the world. Yeah. And, and what Twyla Tharp's method is that you show up and you have a, a structure for your day that facilitates creativity and you show up and you scratch around, you try to come up with some different ideas and mm -hmm. then if you have an idea for, if something you see resonates, um, then you uh, 
you put it in a box. And the idea is that if it inspired you in some way, you can start to build on that and that that will then start to influence your creative process. And um, I think I talked about this in my Craftsy class that we were meeting with um, a designer who designed uh, furnishings, home furnishings for um, Target. And at some point, I think it was, was it Tom Ford, I think, um, was doing a line for Target. And he showed up at the meeting with an ashtray he had gotten from Paris that was um, glass and had leather with white top stitching on it. And he said, this is the inspiration for the line. And that's, so it's this combination of finding things in our case that are never related to quilting. No. They're never related to quilting. We're not looking at somebody else's work and getting ideas. We're, we're looking at interesting things. And then you set up this framework where you show up and you try a whole bunch of things. You scratch around for ideas and you take things that you've found that are inspiring. And then through the process of inspiration and discipline to show up and scratch the ground and see what you can come up with, you start to build the starting point of designs. And, and you have to scratch a lot because a lot. A lot of what you find is not edible seed yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes you get too many ideas. I think part of this process is gathering ideas. Another important part is editing them. And we try to balance the two. And, and I think we're lucky that we, we have this built in collaboration that we bounce ideas off each other, but we also, um, we rarely come up with great ideas under time crunches. Occasionally we do. Well, sometimes we have to. Sometimes but, we have to, but we yeah. tend to percolate. For instance, these quilt alongs that we do, we are often working on not just the next one, but the one after that. Yeah. And constantly. In fabric lines. and you know, Going back and forth with ideas because we know that if we have 50 ideas, five of them may get distilled in the end. You've got to let a lot of stuff go to get to the clarity of the idea. So I do want to just pause. People keep talking about freezing. Um, we have a hardwired connection. So if there's, uh, it's not on our end. So if you're having um, uh, issues on your end, um, it might be um, better for you to watch on the YouTube Later, or, later or, or reboot your device or reboot your device but we're, um, we're definitely well connected yeah here. we are definitely um not right. having there should be no problem on our end and lorraine your comment of working out the difference between rocks rubbish and sustenance is part of the scratch process absolutely it really is and one of the things is you don't always know right away which is which you you, you kind of have to live with some of those as you clearly know but we would, I would say, um, we uh, probably end up making and publishing um, a tenth okay. of what we design mm -hmm. um, because we both have to like it. And sometimes we both have to have time. Well, yeah. but, but I think often we edit each other's ideas and we both have to like it. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, that's, that's a whole collaboration Addition, process. Additional layer, yeah. yeah. The Madras pattern is in Transparency uh, Quilts. It's in that book, um, or it was in our calendar, but it is not um, yeah. a, uh, it is not a standalone pattern. We right. have hundreds and hundreds of patterns, and they're in different places um, because at times we've done publications and some uh, some standalone patterns that maybe were in American patchwork and quilting 15 years ago or right. were in a book that um, is now out of print. So, so our yeah. pattern finder on our website is the best place to find patterns. Um, and if it's not in the pattern finder, it's not available for sale right now by, through by, us. Through us, but there, there are books such as Transparency Quilts 
where there are going to be 10 or 12 patterns that are not on our pattern finder. We want the pattern finder to be something that people can get on our website. And just and click. We don't, have, we, cur we don't currently have that book for sale. Yeah. Um, Debbie said she just put uh, The Creative Habit um, uh, on hold at the library. Yeah, it's, it's a good library book. You, you know, don't find it in a lot of libraries. The thing, the thing that I think is really um, helpful about this book is that um, I came to design late, later in life. Um, I was 30 before I got any design training. And, um, well, I guess I, my flower arranging is, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, but, that um, counts. but I'm talking about like formal, yeah, no you know, college, no, like, yeah, yeah, well, I went to college, but I no, no, no college design <laughs> training, yeah, no college design or but... art. So, um, and I was part of, and my family was part of the culture that believed that um, if you didn't have, by age five, some demonstrable excellence in drawing, that that you were not a creative person, and you need to you need to mm -hmm. pursue another line of. Which work. is very, very common in society. Yeah. And um, what I think is helpful about this book and also um, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards, that's another one, is that she explains that, that there, a small percentage of the world does just sort of show up and have that big aha moment. Fully formed artistic geniuses. Right. Very rare, but it happens. But most of the rest of the world is um, is made up of people who have training and have education in certain design or creative fields, and then they just work at it. And that that is, that is a, um, a definite method for design. And I know I've talked about this before, but art is so often romanticized and people believe you know, you're either this intuitive genius or there's no chance. And I, I liken it to like, if you were really ill and you went to a doctor and the doctor said, I'm just good at medicine, so I skipped medical school. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? Yeah. And, and I, I feel it's the same thing with the arts. Whether you work at it on your own, whether you take classes, you know, whatever that level of training is, work and, and doing more work begets more work, which gets you more practice and experience and you make better decisions. And just as a doctor who has 20 years of experience will have a lot more knowledge, the quilter who's been quilting for 20 years mm -hmm. is definitely amassed an immense amount of knowledge and craft. But I think also having a point of view. Mm -hmm. And if you watch Project Runway, I think is also a really helpful way to understand the various creative processes. There are, there are people who are expert tailors who are approaching it from a very technical standpoint. There are people mm -hmm. who just drape fabric. You know, I think from for quilting, um, I feel like one of the things that that we always start with is the practicality of, is this quilt for a fabric line we've designed? And if so, what is the focus of the fabric line? How is the fabric line organized? And um, so is the fabric organized in two or three color stories or, or two or three values or a background scale fabric. Or yeah. All, Large yeah. scale fabrics, small scale fabrics. So we start with um, some of the time we start with the fabric we plan to use and and try to figure out how to use it to its best advantage. Or we decide we're starting with a shape or a concept and then we're gonna use solids or something. So a lot of it, sometimes we start with the design 
of the shapes and the proportions of the finished quilt. And then we find colors and fabrics to work with it. Um, but if it's our own fabrics and it's for like, you know, we always have to do these promotional um, quilts for each fabric line, then we're looking at, you know, we've designed the fabric and we've put in place a structure and then we need to make sure that the quilt uses that structure to and, its best advantage. And that it works for you and that you're successful with right. it. And so I think, I, I hope one of the undercurrents you hear is that this is a process and it's not always an easy one. I, I see Vicki's comment that this is helpful for you because the pro mm -hmm. creative process takes a long time for you. I think it takes a long time for many, many people, but often you don't see that because you often are just presented with, uh, whether it's a finished garment or whether it's a, a quilt, it's it's often, the hard work is, is kept <laughs> hidden from a lot of people. Yeah. And even when we're designing a fabric line, there are, oh my gosh, I can't count how many fabric lines. We've gotten 90% of the way through and right as we get 90% of the way through, we really understand what we're trying to do. We set that 90% aside and start all over, but we have a really clear idea at that point. So sometimes it takes a long time to get where you're going. Well, and, I, and, I, and there are times, um, for example, where we've designed a fabric line and there's, um, you cannot believe the technical challenges with getting the colors you want in a fabric line. The, oh. There are things like if it's the rainy season in Korea or Pakistan or wherever, and the greens are all muddy or you can't get the pink, or we, we have <laughs> been working <laughs> on this one <laughs> darn fabric for it's just one fabric one fabric. In a, li a line of many fabrics yeah a line of there's one fabrics there's one that's been tripping us up because the mill has just not been able to get the color and we 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 we, and we send them the color hours and, and hours say, and hours this is the color we want and they send it back as a sample and you're like they yeah. don't match can't you see this and yeah like, oh let's try again and we always say like what didn't you get the first time? And three times in a row, it's not the right color. And, and at it's some being point, sent from, you know, Pakistan to New York to Chicago, and then we have a phone call, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, is it better this time? Is you like, yeah, yeah, it's better this time. And, and you like, open up, it's exactly the same. <sighs> so, so it is. We all work with our limitations, and and yeah. sometimes when you're designing a quilt, one of the limitations may be I want to work out of my stash. And I've got to figure out how the pieces of my stash all work together. Other times, it's there's a baby shower this weekend, and I have yeah. three hours to bang something out. What can I get done? So Michelle is asking about whether she could use the transparency fabric in the spirit pattern, which that's the um, the uh, red, white, and blue one. Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. would probably look. I think that I think you could do that. That you could, and I. I think that could look really neat in that. I I'm, I forgot about that quilt. Yeah, um, and I was going to ask you, can you grab oh, a frame of mine? Because I, I know just we've shown this that. before, but but, but um, this is a different uh, point of view. Uh, you're trying to hold it so it's not got glare from the lights. Okay. So if we when we came up with this pattern, for example, these are some of the decisions that we knew before we even had the whole thing. Um, this started out as a sketch, simple sketch on paper. Black and white sketch. Black and white sketch. And I felt very strongly that this line right here needed to not be in the center. And it needed... Get it really close. That seam needed to not be in the middle. And the, the reason... The seam needed, of that square. Right. So a lot of the times we're fixated on proportions and certain what we consider elegant proportions. And to me, having that little sliver was a lot more interesting than having it divided in the middle. Which would have been a much easier pattern. Yeah. But yeah, proportion in this case, we, we had a lot of 
um, a lot of work with proportion. Even that little sliver of black is the yeah, sashing. this one. If it's too thick, then you don't get the sense of the banding yeah. that works horizontally. And if it's too thin, then it's just annoying to sew. Yeah. I want to talk to Jackie's uh, oh, <laughs> comment that the mill might start tagging you as high maintenance. Um, you know, it's a contractual thing. Um, you know, we send drawings and they're supposed to match the drawings. And so um, in any uh, business, there there is a contractual agreement. And the agreement is that... Um, you know, we pay our bills on time, <laughs> you know, we give them things on time, we turn around the... Um, we the, meet deadlines. We meet the deadlines. If they send us... You, you would be stunned that when the package arrives with the printouts to give them approval, um, it typically arrives on by FedEx by 11 o'clock uh, in the morning, and without fail by 11.30... I am on the phone um, giving yes or no answers. So Real I often, minute. yeah, I'm often organizing my day to make sure I am here and available to give very quick responses so I don't hold up production. And, and I also want to address when Jackie says the mill might start tagging you to as high maintenance, but you just keep being you and bless your high expectations. Thank you. But the other thing, we are very fortunate that a couple of the mills that we work with have actually said to Benertex mm -hmm. that they like working with us because we make them better. And I don't totally believe that all the time. Sometimes yeah. they are probably annoyed. But I do think that um, with Benertex... And also it's not us because Benertex is the one that's dealing has with the contract. The mill. But, yeah. but the Benertex design team that we work with actually really enjoys i think our precision because we we're demanding not because we want to be a pain but because we have a very clear vision that we want to achieve and but the, also we're not going to get paid well, if the, if this is the thing if the fabric doesn't sell yeah but, we get paid by the yard and if the and fabric very little is, by the way uh, very little <laughs> and if and if the fabric is ugly, you're not going to buy it, and then we're not going to get paid, and then Better Tex isn't going to make money. So there's a whole economic part mm -hmm. to this where we're trying to do a good job. They, The mill may see it as high maintenance, but, you know, we've been hired to do, to, to produce and give feedback so, so we, the result is a beautiful fabric. And, and we're also look, lucky that Benertex is pretty discerning in the mills that they work with. And we never get pushback from them. We, yeah. th there has never been a moment where Benertex has said you're pushing too hard. They're, they're really happy. They want great fabric. But they, and they've hired, the, you know, top mills to begin with. They could be going to much less expensive production, but that wouldn't be good for them either. And they want they want the best quality, mm -hmm. and they want to be proud of it too. So there there is a um, but there also have been times where we've gotten something that wasn't printed the way we wanted, and it's like oh well. Yeah, now we got <laughs> now we have it. Now we have it. Okay, and we got hundred yards. If we don't get if yeah. we don't if it doesn't it sell, out. you know. So. Um, so it is the whole process of um, designing is, uh, it, it requires so many skills, both quick decision making, but also kind of keeping your eye on the ball and making sure that you can problem solve. If, if they are having a rainy season and the grains are coming out muddy, can you change one other color that doesn't make it look so much it doesn't yeah. make it look as bad so there are times mm -hmm. that we've had to kind of um adapt or change our designs in order to make sure that uh the fabric is you know that like we had one um this is when we were working for another company where there was just all of them were fine 
but there was one that was way too bright and it was we just didn't use it in the quilt yeah we, we you know, literally changed our we we never used that fabric I think it just went on we, clothes. It probably just no, went on clothes. No, no, backing. We use it as a backing. Oh, that that's was the right. solution. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so, kind of a wimpy solution, but it yeah. worked. It worked because we needed to use it, but we we had to hide it. Yeah, and Sandra, you're exactly right. That it, it, it's like we're not being wishy washy. We're we're committing to um, a line. And we've got drawings, and it needs to look like the drawings. Yeah, so when you say being specific, uh, yeah, just means all parties know exactly what is expected. Exactly. It is, um, it's great communication. I think your background as a landscape architect also really, where you were like working with drawings. Contracts. Contracts, yeah. Contracts. Is, is really important. You know, the other thing that was really interesting is um, many years ago, we designed um, some fabrics that were used um, in various uh, products by Crate and Barrel, and we were talking to their textile buyer and um, about this process because they print their own textiles too. And I said to her, uh, is it the case with you that when you get your strike offs, which are like the kind of the rough draft mm -hmm. of, the, of the line. Small, like square foot samples. Yeah, that, um, that I always want to say back to the mill, did you not understand the drawings or did you think that this was correct? When it's just, when it's a big mismatch. Yeah, because you're like, why did they send this back? Because this doesn't look like what I sent them. Do they think this looks like what they sent them? Or was this just as close as they could get and they're hoping I won't notice? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that buyer said, it's like you're reading my mind. Yeah, That's happens. my every day. day. <laughs> and so it's not just us. And it's interesting because this isn't a language barrier between countries. You give them a design yeah. and they send you something that doesn't look like it. And I think with our prints, the Benertex Mills, the first draft we get is actually really good. I'd say it's really like, good. I'd say it's within but that's 90, because of Jessica. Yeah, it's ninety to yeah. ninety-five percent accurate right away. With another fabric company we worked for, we did some plaids at one point that we literally looked at what was like, 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 did we get the wrong? Is this? Like, did we get the wrong envelope? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is absolutely not what Nothing we sent you. Nothing like what we sent them. And and. I remember with this one company, we're like, this doesn't work. We need to send revisions. And the second time, it's still wrong. And, and we yeah, realized we... that in the end, no one knows what we designed. If we can get them to make stuff that looks good together, it may not be what we intended, but... And, and I have my little conspiracy theory yeah. was that they had a bunch of plaids lying around. That they'd already made. That they'd already made. And they were trying to just like pawn it off on us. Mm -hmm. And... This other company wasn't, just didn't really care. <laughs> they just didn't really care whether or not they were like, it's a plaid line, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So just sort of deal with it. So um, at any rate, it, and, it's, yeah. we're, we're, we're really grateful that the, um, the design team that we work with is, uh, is really dedicated to seeing our vision through and under and wanting to understand, mm -hmm. um, but you know each of the fabric lines that um, that you see from us goes through a year of printouts and strike offs and uh, digital files and just every single little um, even with just like something like. This print, um, I can remember that this this dark purple background, this uh, outline, that we needed to make that a little bit darker because for whatever reason, when it went from the drawing to the fabric, it wasn't as crisp as it should have been. And, you know, and so then we'll go back and forth between, do we need to change the background color and make it lighter? Or do we need to make the line darker? And that is, that's a constant. And if so, it's a push -pull because how do you communicate? A 50, and we'll say it needs to be 10% lighter 
it needs to be 10% darker. And then what you have to do is you have to think, when I make that change, how will it look with the other 23 fabrics? So in design, every time you make one change, you have to evaluate the trickle down, the repercussions of it. Okay, and, so and, okay. mission five, yes. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be, um, well, it, it, yeah. Poof. Although mission six will be even more so. Show us a preview of mission five. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> are you going to do that? <laughs> um, the one thing I, I will tell you is that um, the mission five is where you're going to start to see the, the puzzle pieces. Everything's going to kind of coalesce. Not everything. Tomorrow. A lot. A lot. A lot. No, but you're going to be getting. So but you're going to be getting a really. It's going to. You're going to really turn the corner. So the video will explain for mission five some of that and walk you through it. As always, for those of you doing the secret agent quilt along, I'm always torn whether to tell you to watch the video first, read through the. I I kind of like the idea of reading through the pattern and then immediately I watching the video, so that. Um, but because I see the, the statistics, I can see some people immediately go to the video. <laughs> and I'm like, there is no way that they've read that pattern yet. It's too fast. So you do what works for you, but- um, I think reading it through before you watch the video. I, that's my, that's always my suggestion. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I think that you're going <laughs> to um, be happy um, that you'll have some choices and uh, that we're going to then have two weeks between missions five, missions and, five six. and six because as a, as a reminder we're not going we're going to show everything on social media um, uh, with mission six so yeah, you're there will be a reveal of the be, entire quilt of the entire quilt so if you um, don't want to see it, uh, snooze the group and our Sno social media. Snooze that feed. So yeah, yeah so with, with Mission 6, it is different from previous Quilt Alongs in that the pattern will be released simultaneously with an image of the finished quilt. No pressure. So then, Just, But then that means that you will be able to be sharing your progress with the final layout right away. in the group without worrying about it. So uh, Dawn says she uh, prints and reads the pattern and then makes notes while watching the video. Oh, I like That's that, That's exactly the way I would do it. I, I like when people Oh, make Lorraine notes. got a new cutting mat. Oh, you know, isn't oh. it? It's the little things, isn't it? The little L joys in life. Lorraine, we need <laughs> new cutting mats. I, I just... <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how many of you are like me. Just there's a frugality that you know you need the new cutting mat, but you can't bear the cost of the new cutting mat. So you think like another month, another month. Well, and, last and, night when we were actually when we were uh, recording the uh, part of the video, I told Bill, I'm like, could you move it over? <laughs> the cutting mat's a little ratty there. Ratty over there. <laughs> <laughs> so but. anyway. Um, yes, it, it, uh, nice try in getting us to um, spill beans. To Not going to happen. Beans, but yeah, um, but I think uh, I think you're going to have fun with it, and I think those of you who um, were wondering, like, why aren't I seeing more of the uh, quilt along or right, the, transparency. The transparency yet because well, time it's not time yet yes, you'll see you'll see this yes. more so the um, the uh, challenge with kind of organizing this whole thing was that um, we felt like there needed to be a, like an arc to the story and that that needed to, um, you know, there needed to be a, a little bit of an aha mm -hmm. in, in five before you get to six. Um, and then a big aha in six. Yes, and then a big aha in six. So, so we hope it's a wonderful month since this is Quilt yes, First. Yes, yes. We will, we will be releasing Mission 5 tomorrow. 
Yes. And yeah. That's, and then mission six in two weeks. That's it. So have, so, a, have a great February. Yeah. Enjoy every last day of this leap month. Maybe we can do a uh, kind of check-in with the special agents, like how we did the um, fireside chat. Oh, part between yeah, five and between six. Between five and six. Yeah, keep keep. Yeah, yeah, I think we, that might be. Yeah, look at our schedule. Yeah, we, we, I think we she, she's popping this on me. So. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so um, anyway, have a, a great weekend. Your heads are going to be swimming tomorrow. And you'll be sewing. And you'll be you'll have fun. I hope happily sewing. Thanks so for take all care, of everyone. your positive comments and being willing to be um, it, go on our little adventure with us. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. It's been an adventure. So. Yeah. See so you soon. We will see you soon. Bye-bye, all.